Today's video, we're going to be looking at a new stack from T Motor. Now, this is the first official ever F7 flight controller, and to be honest, the most feature packed flight controller they've ever released. And not only that, it's bringing back memories from the old Omnibus. Now, first of all, if you don't know this, or if you haven't seen my video, this is one of the best six SESCs I've ever tested, ever used, and done noise testing on. So, right out of the box, you're getting something proper here. They also give us a PCB here. So, some of you are like, well, what the heck is this? Well, this this could be used for a couple things. It's to protect the flight controller or even use double-sided tape to hold a video transmitter, a receiver, something of that nature. Or if you have your battery straps coming in from the top of the frame, uh, that battery strap doesn't touch the flight controller because obviously the gyro is in there and doesn't move the flight controller and cause unwanted vibration. So it has many purposes. Uh, the only other company that usually does this is actually Maytech. So let's put this to the side. Then we get to the flight controller. The flight controller is pretty interesting. And again, this is the first F7. They're using the baby F7 which is the f722 here they have a lot of things going on here like pit mode you can activate and deactivate however there's no 9 volt regulator but we're going to get into this in a bit and we've got a lot of options here that we have to enable and disable in order to get it to work um, but it seems pretty proper obviously gummies inside and let's get let's get into this because i haven't gotten this far just yet i wanted to keep it preserved for you guys so here we got two connectors down there which we're going to come back to here we have four screws metal screws very long for the stack so hopefully that'll fit most frames we also have our nice trusty low esr capacitor which is a rubicon awesome and it is a 35 volt 470 microfarad really great you're gonna need this you always need this especially on um 6s escs actually on everything they also give us some extra gummies they give us five to be exact which is really great there's already four on this one and they've also given us four pcb wires or race wire whatever you want to call these uh in the packaging which is really great and um let's see what else just the spacers the nuts and everything so that's really nice actually i didn't know they had this in here and even the xt60 pre-made really great also very very thick and very very long uh recommended to shorten this like halfway is good here uh the longer this is the more noise will be in your system and they also give us two connectors. Now, be careful how you connect them because one says ESC, one says FC. It's really great they've done that. And you'll be like, well, why? They're just going straight across. Well, if you go like this, you'll see that they're actually inverted. So I'll actually zoom in here. So this is the top side. And uh, if they weren't inverted, those black wires would be on the same place. So keep that in mind. You could blow this whole thing up if you put these backwards. So where it says ESC, you plug it into this thing. Where it says FC, you plug it into the other thing. That looks like this and you're good to go so let's take a closer look at the flight controller and uh the esc there's really nothing to say about it then it's really good tested it have it on a couple builds i even blew a battery and motors and the esc still functions uh which says a lot and it does have really great uh what is it called throttle response which means no jitters especially on 6s it needs a very fast microcontroller unit and just an overall great design. And you know, this actually gets a, re a plus in my opinion. Now, this thing also has a 10 volt regulator. However, it's actually not being utilized, which we'll cover in a bit here. So this has telemetry, it's a Beal Heli 32, and everything you want in a 6S ESC, this is it right here. So let's put this to the side for now, and let's start covering the flight controller, because the ESC has a really nice feature, if you might say, if they want to call it a feature, and the flight controller here does not utilize that feature, but I can understand why because of another feature they've added. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the flight controller, see the overall board layouts, and uh, what we can see is there's some change of heart maybe i think that's the way you put it some changes have been made here and you can easily spot those so here we have our 16 megabyte of flash memory so that's really great for black box since we don't have sd card expansion our mpu 6000 gyro is right here and here uh, i think that we're going to do some sort of either sensor fusion or dual gyro setups where like an icm and mpu but they've gone ahead and removed that but the legs are still available here or the traces for the other gyro here, they were probably going to use just a full-blown resistor instead of these four right here, which is kind of like a multi-resistor. I don't know what the actual what the real name is for these. But instead of this one, this one, this one, there's another one. Yeah, these two right here, they would have just used this, but I guess they changed their mind here. Um, what else do we have? Here we have our, our switching regulator. It's just a 5-volt regulator. And again, there's no 10-volt regulator. There is uh, just a 5-volt and a 3.3-volt. So that pretty much covers this side of the board. On the back side, nah, nothing special either. No barometer. 
Um, but we do have a transistor. I think this is the transistor that's in charge of pit mode. Now this is a real pit mode where actually uh, disconnects the power to your video transmitter and that would be enabled from here. So you're gonna have to do some bridges before you get this thing completely going. And this is where I'm gonna cover in this video. We have our OSD right here, little baby tantalum capacitors, which OSD is this one? This is the 3.3 volt OSD here. So this is a 3.3 volt, it's a Chinese one. And uh, what else do we have? A little baby tantalum capacitors, or F7, some diode here. The diode's coming in, I think, from the main battery voltage. Now it's also really nice, this takes uh, raw battery voltage between, I think, uh, it's basically up to 6S, and I think a minimum of 2S. Uh, just check the documentation, the link's down below. You can go ahead and check the stack up. So now let's cover how we would go about connecting him. So the first thing we need to find is the arrow, and this arrow should be up top and pointing towards the camera. So if our camera was right here, this would be installed on our quadcopter just like this. And next thing we have is the video transmitter, also the camera, and the receiver can be placed in on any R pad basically because it's an F7. So it, it won't matter if you have S bus, I bus, Fly Sky, FR Sky, or Spectrum, you can put them on any R pad and it'll work. However, I don't recommend you put it on RX4 because RX4 is being utilized for the telemetry here. Keep that in mind. Now, here on the left side, we have camera. So we have our ground, our positive. So ground would be the black wire for your camera. The positive is going to be the red. CC is camera control. So if your camera has OSD, you can actually connect the wire here. You know, it'll enable you to control the OSD of the uh, camera and change its settings, which is really cool. And we have the video input. This would be the yellow wire from your camera. Keep that in mind. However, if you plug it like that, it's, the camera is not going to boot because you're going to have to bridge this right here. So if you wanted your camera to get five volts, which is highly recommended and all cameras just basically take five volts and up, uh, but the safe side is just to give them five volts, um, would be to bridge this left one with this middle one. And that would give it five volts. But if you wanted to give it battery voltage for the camera, then you're gonna have to bridge the middle one with the battery voltage. So keep that in mind. Now I never recommend adding or giving straight battery voltage to the camera because the onboard filtration for the cameras is absolute trash. So keep that in mind. And I've seen that happen a couple times. So it's recommended just to give them from a nine of the regu whatever regulator you have, nine, 10, five volt. So five volt here is what I would do on mine. And our camera's done there. Now here is the video transmitter part. Now the video transmitter can also give five volt or battery voltage. Again, most likely you're gonna be going battery voltage. And the way we'd connect this would be the yellow wire would go to the VO, which means video output, because the video would come in from the camera to the video input. Go inside, go to this chip, put the on-screen display on, and pop it out down to your goggles from your video transmitter. Now T3 here would be for smart audio and with that or any other protocol that allow you to change the channel and output power through the on-screen display. So that's what you where you want to put that. And now R3 would be not usable anymore. So keep that in mind. So if one of the pads that have a T and a R, for example, now the three, the T3 is used, we shouldn't be, we're not going to be able to use the R3 for anything else. So keep that in mind. Very important to take note of that. And here we have our plus and our minus. Plus is going to be the red wire for your video transmitter and minus is going to be the black wire. Now, if your video transmitter takes battery voltage, you'd bridge the left one with the middle one. If it takes five volts, you'd bridge the right one with the middle one and you're set to go. If you don't bridge these, these two won't get power. Keep that in mind. Also, a little nice tip or trick if you might not know this. Um, if you're unable to bridge it, no matter what the hell you did, then you could just take your red wire put it to battery right there, because that's basically battery right there. It would be the same thing. Uh, you can do that and get away with it. So yeah, if you didn't want to bridge them, you can do that. If you wanted five volt, you could just solder it to this guy and you're good to go. Same thing goes for that one. Next, let's cover the receiver. How would we connect our receiver? Now, uh, IBUS and Spectrum, I mean, sorry, I, yeah, IBUS, Spectrum, and uh, FR Sky, whatever protocol you're using, is going to be connected in this area right here. The only difference is with Spectrum is you're gonna give it possibly 3.3 volts because those take 3.3 volts. Anyways, let's cover IBUS and SBUS. So if you had an IBUS, Fly Sky or an FR Sky receiver, you'd wanna put the SBUS or IBUS signal on the R5 right here. That's where I would wanna put it. So you put it right there. And then you wanna put the black wire, which is the ground right here on the G. And this would be five volts. So that would be the red wire. And then now you have a connected uh, receiver. So you're good in that perspective. Now spectrum, usually 3.3 volts. I would still put the signal on R5. 
I would still give it ground, but instead of 5 volts, I would give it 3.3 volts for the red wire. And you're good. Just that's it. And this is really cool because this even supports PPM without having to do anything. So if you're still using a receiver that uses PPM, you can just stick it right there and you're good to go. Now, if we take a closer look here, we also see we have an R3 and a T3 pad. However, you will not be able to use these two if you're using the T3 up here. So keep that in mind. So if you are using smart audio or some kind of a tramp protocol, these are you can't use these for anything else. So keep that in mind and uh, don't screw up. We also have a dedicated RSSI pad. So if your receiver gives some sort of RSSI signal from a dedicated wire, then you can just install that there and you should have that set up. And here we see we have R1 and T1. Now you'll be able to use this for whatever your heart desires, which is really great. And uh, you can use any sensor or anything. For example, uh, I would actually possibly put uh, TBS Crossfire here. Uh, because, you know, that's how it would work. It uses a full UART, the R and the T. I'll probably put the, you know, TBS Crossfire right here. And I'll be good to go. Now, if we take a look on this side right here, we see we have... Uh, E5 and E6. You're like, what the hell is E5 and E6? These are two extra motor output signals that could be remapped to do anything you want, which is also something really nice that they've done that here. They didn't have to, but it's also, you know, it's just a little, ex a couple extra pads you can do whatever you want with. Not whatever you want with, but you can do quite a lot with. Here we have an R2 and a T2, which is not being used by anything else. So you'll be able to use these for anything uh, you wanted to, which is really great. And we also have a ground 5 volt SCL and SDA. These would be for like a magnometer. Some sensors use these pads so you can connect those there. And then this is very important now, R4 and T4. If you're using ESC telemetry, it's on RX4 right here. So you're not going to be able to use these. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have the, you know, the connector with this ESC plugged in and ESC telemetry working, these are basically used up. You can't use these two, uh, which is something very important to take note of here. Now, uh, if you take a look at the pads here, also this connector, but we're going to take a look at the pads because it's the same thing. Uh, for example, if you're not using the same ESC, uh, you're going to have to solder to this right here unless you want to play with the wires. But if you have to solder, it's very simple. Everything is really well labeled here. For example, here's the RX4. This would be for the ESC telemetry. Then the current wire, motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have positive. This would be battery voltage. So... Uh, up to 6S, so keep that in mind, not 5 volt, this would be battery voltage, and then this would be a ground here. And here we have another ground 5 volt buzzer and LED, these are separate here. Uh, these are, if you wanted to connect a buzzer and or LEDs, this is where you'd connect them, right here. So for example, for connecting a buzzer, I'd put the buzzer positive on 5 volt, and the negative on buzz minus, very important, because the buzzers get initialized through the ground here. LED, kind of the same thing, but I wouldn't use the buzzer ground. I would give it ground, which is a black wire. Red wire is the five volt. And then the LED signal here. This is the signal that's going to change the color on the LED. So keep that in mind. Hopefully that made sense. All right, so this area here is very important because this area has to do with your video transmitter if you gave it power from the video transmitter part. Because this is where the transistor that's in charge of your video transmitter is. Now, whether you can choose the video transmitter always on or you can choose pit mode, which means you could assign a switch on your controller in order to give power to the video transmitter. So you can do it both ways. Now, if you're really not experienced, just bridge the left two together and you won't have a headache. Overall layout seems to be pretty good. I've seen better, um, but you know, I wish they've gotten away, just you know, removed these here from their latest design before going into production because this doesn't feel very professional. Unlike their ESCs, their ESCs are really great. Hopefully their flight controller is good. I still haven't used one of their flight controllers yet, if I remember correctly. This might be the first one, not sure yet. I still have a bunch of builds to go fly and test, which I haven't still tested. So yeah, everything here is linked down below. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section if anyone's used any of these and um i'll see you in the next one